on air, online, Tracks FM. 15 minutes past 11. Good morning, Malaysia. Auto here coming to you live from Ankasa, Puri, Kuala Lumpur. Also on our Facebook page, we're currently live as well. Just head over to Trax FM Official. That's T R A X F M O W F I C I A L. And as usual, we have the interview feature of the day, and it's going to be something with regards to caretaker government. And on the line right now, we have J. Azmi Hassan, a senior fellow from Nusantara Academy uh, for, for Strategic Research. Thank you so much, sir, for coming into. Uh, the studio uh, coming to the uh, live session as well. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for having me, Otto. Now, it's the 13th of October on a lovely Thursday over here. Now, before we even start anything, we all understand that the GE15 will be coming up pretty soon, So, which is why we want to know about parliaments. So, in your own professional experience and uh, expertise, what is a parliament and why is it very important to us? Uh, yes, Otto, from the lighter point of view, the parliament is where we can see uh, the antics uh, of our parliamentarians, 222 of them debating any issues or debating any proposal of bills. Uh, we can see the bad, the good, and the ugly of our politicians. That, that, that's the lighter side, Otto. But on the uh, serious side, Otto, pa- our parliament consisted of uh, two houses. One is the Dewan Rakyat, consisted of 222 seats. And another is, uh, sometimes we tend to forget, is our Dewan Negara. Uh, there are 70 senators. So any bill that want to be debated, want to be passed uh, to be as a law, has first to go, has to go to be the Dewan Rakyat. Then only they, they have to go to Dewan Negara. Only when the both houses passes the bill, then only it will become the law. I think that's uh, the parliament that we really understand also. Now, what happens now since the parliament has been dissolved? Is there anything that we need to know? Uh, yeah, one thing for sure is that uh, the the last the current uh, parliament sitting has been stopped, has been uh, because of the uh, dissolve of the parliament. Uh, but again, without parliament, uh, the MPs are still there until uh, the next general election, when the de- when whatever the date is. But the more important thing is the government is still functioning. I think that's the more important thing, the, the executive part of it, uh, which is not part of the parliament. Parliament is the legislative part, but the executive part, which is the government, is still functioning as usual, but with a few limitations or so. Now we're talking to Azmi Hassan, Senior Fellow, Nusantara Academy for Strategic Research and um, geo, uh, geo Research as well. Uh, in your opinion, after the announcement of the dissolution of Parliament on Monday, the caretaker government comes into effect. Now, you, can you explain what is a caretaker government? Uh, well, as stated by the, uh, not by the law, but I think by uh, convention, a care, caretaker government is consisted from the previous government this, before the government is dissolved. Uh, but the limitations are there. For example, the prime minister or any minister cannot introduce new policies. Uh, they only uh, have to perform day-to-day operation of the government without any drastic change in the current policies. I think that's the limitation. But the problem with Otto is that uh, as today, for example, uh, I think uh, one of the limitations is that the tech at caretaker government cannot use government machinery for the purpose of campaigning, even though we have not, we have not gone to the campaign period yet. But again, uh, that's the limitation. One of the uh, sensitive limitations that the usage of the government palace facilities by party, which consisted of the federal government, cannot be used. I guess that's the, the most uh, severe limitation that we are aware of, Otto. Thank you so much, Azmi Hassan, uh, for that. We'll go, we're going to take a short break right now, and we're talking to a senior fellow at Nusantara Academy for Strategic Research, a geostrategist, and uh, we're going to take a short break and follow back with some more great questions. Now, if you want to have any uh, conversation or you want to uh, leave out a comment, you can do so via our Facebook account right now at Tracks FM Official, T-R-A-X-F-M-O-F-F-I-C-I-A-L, and we'll be right back right here on Tracks FM. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. On air. On the Tracks of Family. 
Good morning, Malaysia. With the interview feature today, we have a caretaker government with regards to the topic today. And she asked me, Hassan, a geostrategist, is a fe- senior fellow at Nusantara Academy. Once again, thank you very much for uh, you know, spending time with us. Yeah, thank you again, Otto. Now, with regards to the previous question, uh, the follow-up towards that, who actually makes up the caretaker government? Uh, well, the, the current government or the previous government, the ministers and also the prime minister, uh, make up the caretaker government. I think uh, the transition is very, very subtle uh, because the day-to-day operation of the ministers and also the prime minister, I think, go on as usual. And as I mentioned before this, no new policies can be made or should not be made during the caretaker government period. Now, what is the role and scope of power with regards to that? Uh, well, I think the, 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 the power and the scope of uh, influence uh, on the caretaker government is similar to the current or the normal government, uh, except that the problem is that, uh, for example, this morning also, uh, there is a officiating of the new highway, Dash Highway. Mm-hmm. Uh, some say that uh, it's some part of campaign. So it's a very blur, uh, a blur distinction between campaign and official duties. But again, for ministers, their official duties is going on as usual but do not use the official duties as part of their campaign, even though we haven't started campaigning yet. I think uh, there's uh, some distinction between the caretaker government and the normal government, Otto. Now, the provision for a caretaker government in Malaysia, is there any constitution for that? Uh, No, there is no written law about it. Uh, It's not written in our constitution. It's just that it's the norm. I think from our first general election before... Uh, before our independence up to right now, GA14, there has not been a serious breach of the, on the part of the caretaker government. I think that's the reason why. Uh, the reason is that uh, there is no, uh, I would say, desire to create a law on the caretaker government on what they can or cannot do so far. So, so far, I think all's been very good, Otto. Now, is, has this is the caretaker government? Has this been? Uh, has it happened before? Oh, yes. Uh, every when when the parliament is dissolved, uh, there are times at least a four weeks time when the election commission needed uh, from the day it was dissolved, the parliament dissolved until election day, basically four to five weeks. Uh, the uh, election commission needs. So between these four to five weeks, that's where the caretaker government is in functioning. Except that uh, we, we did not realize that it is a caretaker government or the normal government. Because when the caretaker government, some uh, politician demanded that the ministers return all the government assets to the government, for example, official, official car baby. Uh, I think that's the reason why, as a layman, for, for me, for example, uh, there is no great distinction between the caretaker government and the normal government because the function of the government I think, uh, perform uh, as usual, Otto. Mm-hmm. But as a caretaker government, uh, since you did say that, uh, mentioned that you know, there's no proper guidelines, has there been proposed guidelines before this? Uh, not that I'm aware of, Otto. There is no uh, demand for a proper guideline, except that uh, usually the opposition uh, will put out a statement, will put out a warning uh, for the caretaker government, do not uh, use government facilities, return all government uh, facilities, for example, uh, as I mentioned before this, uh, official car maybe. I think, I think uh, that's the argument made by the opposition. But the problem is when you return official car, uh, how can you perform official duties? Because you are still performing official duties. I think uh, so far as I'm concerned, uh, there is no push for a guideline. I said that uh, we are... I would say, depending on the moral and the norm of the previous caretaker government. So. Now, when you say norm, and it's also a norm that people make mistakes as well. So should there be a guideline for a caretaker government to actually be enforced? Yes, you have a point there. Also. I think uh, not that people make mistakes uh, unintentionally, mm-hmm. maybe they made it intentionally, mm-hmm. uh, especially during campaign period. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of officiating business going around. Uh, so I think, yes, I think we need a guideline, uh, at least a guideline, I guess. But the problem with guideline is also it can be 
follow or it can be broken. That, that, mm-hmm. That's the problem of guidelines. But yes, I think I concur with you. At least we need some guidelines so that uh, the, the minister, the prime minister in the tech sector government know what are the do's and the don'ts also. But then again, uh, my and on my opinion as well, when it comes to a caretaker government, if there's a proper guideline, wouldn't that also promote you know misuse as well some, in some point of time? Because we are all human. So we do make mistakes. And as you mentioned as well, that uh, you know unintentionally as well, it might happen. So what is your take on that? Uh, yes, I think. Uh, yeah, I think. I think the guidelines will help. I guess. Uh, but again, uh, as I mentioned before, this uh, right start from our earlier general election, uh, there are some accusations that the caretaker government misused government policies. I mean, government facilities. But again, uh, this is not something that are very extreme. Uh, it is a very blurred distinction between official official duties and also campaigning. But again, uh, guidelines will help. Uh, because it will create a fair, I would say, atmosphere. One of the issues that crop up with the caretaker government is the use of media. Mm-hmm. I think the media, I think the opposition want some fair allocation for them to appear on national uh, television, for example. I guess I think that's a very fair request. Uh, so the minister, I guess, that uh, in charge of the media, I think has to be very fair at this, so that all quarters, all political parties get a fair share of the government policies, or government facilities, mm-hmm. especially on the media part. Now, in your own expertise, how long do you think it would take to have proper guidelines for a caretaker government? Well, it shouldn't be long. It shouldn't be that, I would say, difficult mm-hmm. uh, to have a proper guideline because it's just only a guideline. It doesn't have to be passed in Dewan Rakyat. It doesn't have to go to the Dewan Negara because it's only a guideline. And, and all parties should be partisan about the guideline. I think uh, it shouldn't be very difficult, except that also there is no push. Uh, I think politicians see there is no need for it uh, for the time being. I think that that's a problem. Not the time limit, but the push for it is still not there, Otto. Thank you very much. We're talking to Azmi Hassan, a senior fellow from Nusantara Academy for Strategic Research and Geostrategist at heart as well. So we're going to take another short break and we'll be right back with our guest for today, right here on Tracks. Hey, by the truth! On air. Online. Tracks of Hey. Good morning, Malaysia. Auto here coming to you live from Angkasa, Puri, Kuala Lumpur. Also on our Facebook page right now at Tracks FM Official. That's T R A X F M O F I C I A L. And with the guest for today, we have Azmi Hassan. We're talking about the caretaker government with uh, Anchi Azmi Hassan, the senior fellow, Nusantara Academy for Strategic Research. Thank you once again for you know being online with us, Anchi Azmi. Thank you. My pleasure, Auto. Now we've already establish what is the caretaker government and uh, how it affects us. Now, we want to know, actually, how about the civil service and authorities? Uh, yeah, I think the civil service and uh, other civil authorities, I think they are functioning as usual. And they take instruction from the minister as usual. Uh, there is no big issue to it. Uh, one thing for sure, very interesting, also I like to highlight, is the United States. Uh, they don't have a caretaker government, but their system is more, I would say, interesting. Hmm. Uh, because uh, during uh, November, I think that's the uh, presidential election. Okay. And the inauguration of the president is on the January, the third week of January. So there is a two-month period. Mm-hmm. So they have, basically, at that particular time, they have two presidents. One is the sitting president. And another is the incoming president. And the incoming president also can establish his own cabinet and has his own office, not at the White House, but somewhere else. So it's more complicated compared to our caretaker government because our caretaker government is the previous government. Uh, so it's not that complicated as the U.S. Uh, system, Otto. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So uh, will this actually affect public service daily function when it comes to uh, the caretaker government in Malaysia? Uh, no, Otto. Me, as a former civil servant, Otto, I think uh, a civil servant uh, will work with the current government, whoever <laughs> the government is. I know, Otto, yeah. uh, but that's the case, I guess. So there will be no disruption of service uh, because, uh, as I mentioned, the, the caretaker government is the previous government. So there won't be any extreme change in policies, I guess, uh, uh, Otto. Now, uh, 
with regards to the policies, is there a limitation for a caretaker government and uh, what are they, if there's any? Uh, one thing for sure, uh, uh, there will be no new policies. Mm -hmm. uh, how light the policy is, how minimal is the policy, it cannot have new policies because we want to avoid difficulty to the incoming government. Uh, so if the current government, the current care, caretaker government introduce new policy, maybe the next government, the new government, will have to dish out the policy. So to avoid uh, this kind of difficulties, awkwardness, I think no new policy will be introduced or can be introduced by the caretaker government. Also. Now, if there were to be an emergency situation, what would happen then? Would the caretaker government enact any new policies, for example, the GE15, if it were to happen uh, anytime soon? Um, during a particular emergency, will the caretaker government do, you know, make a policy? Can they make any policies? Or who would it fall under to? Uh, well, let's let take a very specific example, Otto. Uh, for example, uh, during the care taker government, there is a big flood. Mm -hmm. That's it, there's a big flood. Uh, so, but the care taker government cannot make decision to postpone the election, mm -hmm. the general election. Even the election commission cannot make the decision because there's only one thing or one uh, procedure to cancel an election or to postpone election, mm -hmm. which is the proclamation of emergency. Mm -hmm. So I guess the Prime Minister, the caretaker Prime Minister, can advise the King in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, other emergencies, I guess, uh, ought to have confidence on our civil servant. I think they have done a, a good job. I think uh, not to be uh, sarcastic, Otto, but with mm -hmm. or without a government, Otto, I think our civil servants will function as usual, Otto. <laughs> I do believe so. Now, will there be any marked changes in uh, how things are being done anytime? Uh, in terms of what? During the tenure of yes. ethical government? Yes. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. There will be some marked changes, except that uh, there will be a flurry of officiating that, officiating this. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I don't see any marked changes, Otto. All right, we're going to take another short break. We're talking to Azmi Hassan, Senior Fellow, Nusantara Academy for Strategic Research, we're talking about caretaker government. So should you have any questions or you just like to say hello, you can do so via our Facebook account right now at TraxFM Official. That's T-R-A-X-F-M-O-F-F-I-C-I-A-L. Or if you want to give us a call or ask any question with our good guest for today, you can do so at 0322825491 or 0322824746. Now we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back with our guest right here on Trax. Hey, buddy. Tracks FM. Good morning, Malaysia. On to here, coming to you live from Ankasa, Puri Kuala Lumpur, also on our Facebook page at Tracks FM Official. And today's guest, we have Azmi Hassan, Senior Fellow of Nusantara Academy for Strategic Research, a geostrategist at heart. Thank you so much for coming to the studio. I mean, online right now with us. Now, with regards to the caretaker government, so in your opinion, what will happen next? Uh, well, also what will happen next is that caretaker government will take care of us, will take care of the, our nation until general election. Uh, mm -hmm. So general election, I think uh, on the this 20th of November, uh, October, uh, each uh, election commission will have their meetings, and that particular meeting will determine the date of nomination day, uh, how long is the campaign period, and when is the polling day. So up until polling day, I think uh, the caretaker government, of course, will take care of us, Otto. <laughs> Nicely said. And uh, before I let you go, is there anything else that you'd like to um, you know, mention to our listeners or Tracks FM? Uh, yeah, I have a uh, full confidence of a uh, caretaker government, Otto. Let, let, let me have uh, another 60 seconds, I guess, uh, to put an example. When Prime Minister Boris Johnson step aside, there are three weeks delay in electing leave trust. Mm -hmm. uh, during that particular period, uh, Boris Johnson is the caretaker prime minister. But the problem is also, during his tenure, he assigned few ministers in a few ministries that are vacant. Uh, so when leave trust took over, it is an awkward position for her because she needs to fire because she needs to elect new ministers. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but the good thing is that the ministers knew that they will be fired, so they resign after that. So I think it will not occur in Malaysia. Uh, our government, caretaker government, will take care of us, that one and foremost important, but won't be introducing new policies. 
so that the incoming government won't be in an awkward position, Otto. Thank you very much for that example. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time off your busy schedule for coming into the studio and talking to us here live on Tracks FM Official. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's my pleasure, Otto. Thank you. There, there you go. It's Senche Azmi Hassan, the Senior Fellow of Nusantara Academy for Strategic Research, talking about the caretaker government. So once again, thank you so much for those who are actually online joining us on our Facebook page and for you for listening in right now. Now, uh, coming up, we have the news coming up at the top of the hour at 12, which is noon, and I'll be back with some entertainment news and also some stories as well. Stick around right here on Tracks FM. Good morning, Malaysia. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. On air. On the... Tracks of